guys. I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough of this little scene I've been doing. Um, a lot of people ask me about it, some sort of mystery, how it's made. Um, and I just did a walkthrough, but I do a little walkthrough of the scene. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's a very small scene. It was made very, very quickly um, just to get it out. These are a lot of the renders which I didn't publish. Those are some of the that I did. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to pick them up on another video. And um, so let's just have a look. So the scene without the ceiling is just simply this. We've got a hallway, which you don't see much of, and two doors. And then it's a very, very, very small scene. I'm using F-Storm. And so we've got some portals out there and that's just pushing some extra light in. Especially with a scene like this, with such um, low level lighting, um, you need to push as much in as possible. Um, let me just find those images again. You know, it doesn't have any artificial lighting, so you need to push whatever you can through um, through the windows, and it takes a lot. Um, so I started with just the walls and just getting the proportions of the windows and stuff like that and then started modeling them. Um, it's just regular box modeling, but just windows are a pain. And then, um, you know, the next major thing was these cupboards and a uh, nice stainless steel top. And um, it was all just laid out basically around the compositions. Um, I wanted to make it extremely small so I didn't have to do a lot of work and get it out quickly. Um, all the models are purchased. Uh, I did make these oven fronts, although the actual inside of the ovens are just from another model. Um, any flat, simple surfaces are made myself. Um, anything else is repurposed. A lot of these natural cookwares are just made by myself because uh, it's very quick modeling, but something like this, which is scanned, I just bought. Um, and that's it, let's see. So the way the scene's put together is just that. And then I've got a ceiling just to cap it off. It doesn't even have a texture, it's just straight up. And then on the exterior, we've just got a ground plane. And then this is just a 3D model from 3D Sky in the background. And then obviously there's heaps of cameras. <laughs> But if we go inside here, I'll just, what I'll do is, I'll just get this rendering and I'll pause the recording and come back and I can show you inside and we can buzz around. And if you have any other questions that I can answer them, just leave a comment below. Okay, we're back in rendering. I'm just gonna go turn off the depth of field so we can not have to refocus over and over and over again. Okay, so the scene setup is simple, just pretty much basic uh, tone mapping. I've got a Johannes um, LUT in there. Um, environment, let me just try to pull up a material editor. The, the HDRI, I'm pretty sure, is just like a CG source um, cloudy sky. No, why it's so locking up. So there you go, CG source. It's um, cloudy sun 307902. And then I've actually got the gamma set a bit higher to make it really, really soft. Uh, you got to be careful with that. You just got to really know what you're doing because unless you really got to balance it out when you're doing the tone mapping and uh, the environment, because it can look very, very odd. I don't know if this is taking a lot because I'm recording as well. So there we go, it's just, I just desaturated it even more just to get this nice clean white light in there. 
and um, inside, you know, it's just, you know, we got, you know, a lot of this was I wanted a stainless steel bench, and this stainless steel bench is, you know, stainless steel is never easy um, to sort of mix and make it look natural. Can we pick that? So I've got, at the top here, I've got a mix. So the fingerprints are just a flat gray and they mixed on top with a, um, a map. And then underneath we've got two base stainless steels. One's more glossy and one's more of the streak, the dark scratches on top. And then it's just a regular, how you would create a regular um, stainless steel in F-Storm. Um, you know, it's it's all about balancing it right. It doesn't always look right. Um, you really need this to render, but this nickel on this tap is fantastic. I really enjoy this. Um, I wanted to have that like stainless steel, but then also have like a, you know, like it's got a coating on it. So it's nice and um, it's got a bit of a gloss to it. It's not just flat like raw stainless scratch, like the micro scratches, um, what everything else is in here. This is just a um, Nordiska kitchen design, and that's where most of the inspiration came from. I will show you quickly my reference to, and then you just, you can see directly um, where the whole kitchen design comes from is just a kitchen from them and I just put together bits and pieces that I liked. I liked this kitchen with the double drawers. I thought that was better, but I really liked this sort of setup with the shelf at the top. And I tried to find uh, things that matched cutlery and crockery wise, or I just made it myself, um, you know, made some alterations to get the kind of lighting I wanted. Um, this is fantastic. So you can't go wrong finding good, you know, reference for something what you want and then pull bits and pieces in and out you know I took this from this kitchen and a bit of this from this kitchen and you know you know bits and pieces from everywhere the windows are actually from a separate image completely and they're much larger so I just you know scaled those down um, and apart from that it was just sort of working out really good compositions in such a small space um, that's it, there's no magic. The most important thing that I found out through this process was in the kernel settings, just to get it rendering faster, you know, um, having relative power clamp at two, much, much faster. And, you know, these are just fiddly settings that I just had to work it out to make it render faster. But I still, when you're rendering a final scene, you know, you just want it to render so you're willing to let it sit overnight, you know, put a batch on, come back in the morning and they're all rendered. That's obviously very different if you're doing commercial work. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not a complicated scene. It's more about, in this case, I think design than it is about some sort of fancy render settings. Um, so don't, you know, there's not always something someone's doing like with a perfect HDRI or the lighting or something like that. Sometimes you also have to improve your design eye so you know what looks good, you know, on a bench or you know what is very current and trending for a kitchen. Not necessarily like, how do they get the light in there? These are all very technical things which you can learn. Um, you know, there are skills like composition where you can learn um, and you know, ways to learn that, but you also got to train your like design eye to understand what looks good. You know what I mean? A lot of the time you can see a render that's actually not executed that well, but it's actually really interesting to look at because it, the design is really there and that's what makes it interesting. And so that's it. If there's anything else you wanted to see, I may do another series where I um, actually do a project from start to finish. Um, let me see if I've got something about that. But I'm interested if people are interested in, um, to doing more 
and I can put it on YouTube or I can put it on Patreon if people are interested. Um, this is the image, the starting point that I just mocked up and I was going to take this, it's a library, and I was going to take this from this base model setup I just did to an actual finished, you know, render, color, books, everything that you could give to a client. Um, and if you're interested in that, just um, mention in the comment and, you know, give me a like and I can keep going. Okay, thanks.